Hello, I'm Sean Kelly, the CEO of Human Healthy Vending, a company founded in 2008 in Los Angeles, California. At Human, we place 100% healthy, high-tech vending machines in schools, hospitals, health clubs, and office buildings across North America. We do this by partnering with a network of passionate social entrepreneurs that own and operate the machines in these locations. We make money through the sale of the machines, the products in the machines, and then a digital advertising network that runs through those machines. And we also give 10% of profits back to charities and organizations that fight childhood obesity. Currently, we're a 25 employee organization with $7 million in revenue, and by 2015, we expect to have 10,000 machines in the field. Well, thank you, uh, Joni and Clay, so much for uh, having me here at Aileron. Great to have you. It's, uh, it's fantastic as a native Michigander to be down, <laughs> here, in, uh, down here in Ohio at this uh, beautiful campus. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were asked this previously. What did you see going from a you know single digit millions in revenue to I always use that hundred million because I think hundred million is um, it's very rare and you have to create a very successful organization to get to that number. Mm -hmm. What were the key personal habits that you had to change in order in order to get there? Wow, <laughs> lots. I mean, almost a metamorphosis. Um, I went to American management to start and we did strategic planning and professional management and all of the elements of that. And then I, I attended a leadership um, uh, competency, it was a management competency lab where they measure your management skills against norms, do 360s. And when I came away from there after a week, six weeks, away from there where they analyze the data and you go back for another six, uh, you, uh, another uh, uh, week. I came away from that l second week realizing that my weakness as a manager was in development of people. And not only was it a weakness, but it was, a, it was really holding me back because it was a manipulative approach, mm -hmm. almost a Pygmalion approach to how I develop people. And I changed from trying to make you into a model and let you be who you can be and do everything I can to support you as long as you were continuing to support and, 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 and commit uh, and, and do your job w within the business. And that led to Imes University. And Imes University, in my mind, was a significant contributor to the success of the business because it took our productivity from 180,000 revenue per employee to over half a million in a period of about five years. And it was all about that paradigm shift between what is best for me and what's best for you and finding a win-win around that. So how did you actually, you know, after that review, I came back and said you're, like you said, you know, more manipulating of a leader, mm -hmm. more big million, you know, you need to do this. Were there any practices that you took day in and day out? I don't know if it's when you woke up or if it's when you went to bed or, you know, reminders that you had in the week of becoming that leader. Because I think so often um, as entrepreneurs, we say, oh, well, we should do this. But how the heck do we do it? We know what we should do sometimes. And I think that's my biggest concern right now is, is knowing. I mean, coming back from Aileron, it's like you guys, you guys provided a framework. You apply that framework. I have no doubt we're going to be able to get to where we want to go. But it's one thing to have the framework, another thing to actually be able to change yourself. So I don't know if you have any answers for that specifically. But well, I do. Um, when I first started the professional management, before the competency lab, about three or four years before that, <clears throat> we had a consultant and I hired him to help us get started in strategic planning. And the first day, the deal I had with the consultant is I'll uh, $5,000 retainer up front per quarter. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, if I don't implement, he quits. And if I get unhappy with him, I can fire him. Mm -hmm. And so we start papering the walls of the operating problems in the company. And at about 10 o'clock, I'm ready to fire the guy. And before I fire him, I'm asking some of my team over coffee, if, are these really the issues? Are these the things that are going on in the business? And yeah, yeah, they are. That, those are that's what's going on. That's, these are the problems. 
Why was I sensitive to that? Because 75% of all the problems that were on that wall, in some way, was because of me. I created these problems by making these quick decisions without studying, you know, that, that typical hip shooting entrepreneur. And all of a sudden I realized, hey, if we're going to build this $100 million company, I have to change my behavior. That's why this planning course, this president's course, that's the first course at Aileron, is the management course for presidents, for CEOs. If we can't get you to understand that you need to change your behavior, you're never going to grow that business. Exactly. And, and what's really exciting, I think, and you've already shown this by coming here and just being open, is probably the biggest um, success factor we've seen in all these entrepreneurs that, that adopt professional management is they're open to being vulnerable and not knowing everything and you're putting your ego aside. Mm -hmm. So Clay obviously put his ego aside and he talks about that ego and how it can really get out of check. But people like yourself yesterday who are asking questions and, and you're smart people who have lots of competencies but you're always willing to learn, it seems that that's a, a successful behavior trait mm -hmm. that allows people to really go better because there's always, you're always hungry for learning that next thing. Yeah, it's definitely something I've learned in the last couple of days is that having a little bit more outside perspective mm. combined with accountability yeah. for me. Take, yeah. take it even away from just let's right. look selfishly at me. That alone would probably yeah. allow our company to double, triple. You need an outside board. Mm -hmm. You're ready for an outside board. Yeah, that actually keeps us accountable, not a Hold not a phone. surface level, no, no, you know, no. but literally an A board, board of advisors, people yeah. who you respect, who have disciplines and strengths and, for example, franchising is one of your issues, mm -hmm. finding franchisees. I would find somebody who has an in-depth experience in franchising mm -hmm. to come to my board. Yeah. I would have somebody that has made the transition from the 15 to 20 man company or person company to the to the to the hundred man, get somebody on the board that's built a hundred million dollar company. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it's been a while since I was involved in a hundred million dollar company, and a lot of things have changed. But if you have somebody who, in the past three to five years, has just built a hundred million dollar company, they are on point about what it takes to go from ten million to a hundred million, mm -hmm. and they know the pitfalls that you might encounter along the way. Paul Imes told me a long time ago, he said, the, it isn't knowing what to do that's important. It's knowing what not to do. Yeah. You know, that's the key. That's what's going to get you. Well, that, it's a perfect time then, Clay, to ask you to be on our board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm honored, but I'd have, we'd have to talk more about that. 